Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. I am so excited for today's video. Can you believe that in like the many years I've been on YouTube, I've never filmed a mukbang. Like I've never ever sat down, ordered food and like eaten and chat with you guys. Today's the day I've been to McDonald's. I've ordered myself loads of food. Actually, before I get ahead of myself, I did put a Q&A box up on my story to get your guys' questions coming in. One of the main questions was, what's a mukbang? Am I even saying it right? A mukbang, mukbang, I don't know. The Americans call it a mukbang. But essentially, what I know it as is where you order food, you just sit down and chat and like you eat food on camera. Is that basically what it is? I feel like that's it. I personally absolutely love watching these videos. I feel like they're the, they're the best kind of videos to put on in the background. If you're say like cleaning your house or you're doing your makeup or say you're eating as well. Yeah, we'll get straight into it. I'm so excited. I'm going to put my McFlurry in the freezer, I think, because it's going a little bit melty. I'm not going to talk about the amount of toppings and sauce on this McFlurry because I don't want to get the video off to a bad start. I'm trying to be positive. For drink, I ordered... A Coke Zero with ice. I'm not going to go as far as to say it's an addiction, but it's kind of an addiction. Like, I do have to have a can of Coke Zero every day. That's really bad, isn't it? First up, we've got some chippies. I did eat a couple of these in the car. I then also got three chicken selects. You can never go wrong with a chicken select. Sometimes I do actually prefer to get chicken selects over chicken nuggets. I did also pick up six chicken nuggets, just in case I wanted them, just in case, you know. Then, as for the thing that I've never tried before, I tried to order the Big Tasty, um, but they didn't have any left. I got this Homestyle crispy chicken. This is what it says, Homestyle crispy chicken. I never get burgers from McDonald's. This is what it looks like. Oh, it's kind of good. It's got like bacon, lettuce, tomato. I think there was like some onion in there as well. Caramelized onion, oh my gosh, I love caramelized onion like caramelized onion chutney with pate on toast oh my gosh the bun's kind of nice as well it's kind of got like poppy seeds and are they poppy seeds are poppy seeds and sesame seeds on it's really really good and in case i didn't like that burger because I, I can be a little bit fussy sometimes but i think i will like it i just want myself a, ch a plain cheeseburger as well because me and my plain cheeseburger is like we're in a relationship like that's another a bit of addiction for me like if i'm ever driving past a mcdonald's and i feel a little bit peckish i'll be like oh I'll just go and, go and grab a plain cheeseburger because I've somehow convinced myself that they're not bad for you. Ketchup, because I love ketchup so much. And I get sweet curry because it's the best. So yeah, I did put a question and answer box up on my story yesterday. Also, me with this regular content, who is she? Like, who is she? Because I've been uploading like basically once a week and sometimes twice a week. Like, I don't want to jinx it, but I feel like this is a new me. I am loving putting my content out so much at the minute. And like, I love creating YouTube videos so much. I've always said to you guys that it's my favorite platform. Like, I love it so much on here. I just feel like I've said it so many times, but Instagram is one dimensional. Like, you don't see who that person is, but then I can come on here and chat to you, engage with you. The first question is actually from my mum. She says, I hate mukbangs with a passion. Can you do it without being greedy? The reason why I saw that is because when you put a question and answer box up on your Instagram, it kind of comes up in order of relevance. If like you follow that person, or like obviously because it's my mum and I follow her, her question came up first. Um, she says she hates mukbangs. So mum, I know you'll be watching this and I'm sorry. I think what she's saying is she doesn't like it when people order like loads and loads of food that goes to waste. Like my mum is actually obsessed with YouTube. She watches all the same people that I do. Um, we always like chat about people's videos and like, oh, did you see this person's video this week? Like well, she's really like down with the kids with YouTube. She loves it. Um, but she hates 10,000 calorie challenges she's like it's just so greedy and like unnecessary which i do understand um but to be honest mum, i would actually order this amount anyway first bite of chicken select unreal this barbecue sauce makes chicken selects just 10 out of 10 unbelievable mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. okay this is a good one now that you have your house what are your next goals so excited to see your homepage. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Um, I think that's a really good question about what are your next goals now that you've got your house. Because if you guys know me, like if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you will know that getting that house um, was my biggest, biggest goal. It's been my main goal for the last three years. Now my top goal's been achieved. I'm like, I need a new top goal. Like I need something else to always be striving towards and always be wor working towards. One second, let me just have another bite of this. And my initial first thing that I was going to say was that I'm... I've ordered a new car, which is coming soon. But I think really like there's nothing actually physical or like in regards to buying anything 
that I'm really working towards anymore. Now we have our house, I feel like anything else that I'll be working towards will kind of just be within myself without sounding really cringy. Recently, this is another question which I'll move on to in a bit, I did actually get a therapist um, because I felt like at a time a few months ago, I really, really needed it. I'll, I'll talk to you guys about that later on in the video, but um, she actually really helped me to sort of understand that it's good to control my thoughts. And that's something that I've been working on re recently. And I think my next goal is to sort of just like, continue to like work on being in a good place mentally. When I'm happy, like everything else kind of feels good and falls into place and feels so much better. Like, my relationship's good, my relationship with my family's good, my work's good, like when I'm happy, things are better. I hope that makes sense. Like I just feel like it's nothing really materialistic or physical that I'm striving towards anymore. Last little bite of my second chicken select. Mm. 10 out of 10. Whilst I'm on the line of mentioning about having a therapist and stuff, a lot of questions were about um, dealing with negativity. This person said, I know you might not answer this, but how do you deal with hate and negative people? I definitely got to a point a few months ago. It's hard to like eat when you're talking about serious things because I'm like munching on a chicken select and a chip while I was trying to talk about like a serious topic. But hang on, let me just, uh, let me just have a couple of bites of food. I would say that I got to a place in my life a few months ago where I was really struggling with a few things. And something that I really, really struggle with is I hate to burden people around me with my problems and like I could definitely sit there all day and talk to Tommy about how I'm feeling. Sometimes I feel like I don't want to put that on them. I feel like they've got their own things to worry about. Like everyone has their own issues and worries. Like I don't want to sit down and, and reel all mine off to someone. And I think that's why I got to a point where I kind of felt like maybe if I get a therapist, like this would be a good way for me to sort of like un uh, um, offload and just talk about how I'm feeling and maybe learn about ways to deal with things that I've been going through that I don't really know how to handle. I don't want you guys to think that I'm sitting here completely oblivious to the fact that having a therapist is a complete luxury. That's why I've never spoken really about it before in detail. I'm not having sessions with a therapist anymore. And it's, it feels even weird saying that. It's never something that I thought that I would need to do. When I've heard people talking about it in the past, I'm like, oh gosh, like I don't think I'd ever really need to do that. But I don't know, life comes at you fast. Life comes at you fast. And like one minute you could be fine and the next minute you feel like, everything's kind of like on top of you. Generally, in regards to dealing with the negativity and the hate and stuff, guys, I've honestly just become like a bit immune to it now. Then my sister recently sent me something that went viral on Twitter about me changing the um, tiles in the bathroom in our new house. And it like blew up and everyone was going mad about it. And it's just like, I feel like I have to become immune to these things because if you're not, like you won't sleep at night. Like, do you know what I mean? I feel like you have to literally just not even, I can't explain it guys. I feel like I've had to learn to look at things that are written about me and think, okay, like, because before I'd be like crying and getting so upset and be like, you know, why do they feel this about me? Like, it's just not true. I'm not that person. When you know yourself so well, when you know who you are, Nothing that people can say about you can really get to you and nothing can really affect you. Um, this is getting so deep, but I don't know. I just feel like I've really had to develop, especially over the last six months, I've had to grow such thick skin um, and learn that not everyone's gonna like you in this life. Like no matter if you're online or offline, like not everyone's gonna like you and that's fine. So when they say home style, do they mean like it's the kind of burger that you'd make at home? I don't know, is that is that what they're trying to like mean by that? I'm not sure about this bacon, you know. I feel like I'm not really I'm not really keen on like the fatty. Maybe I'll just take that out because I'm not sure if that bit's for me. Guys, I'm gonna take a bite. This is the homestyle chicken burger. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion of what I think because the chicken Big Mac, holy smokes. If you watch that video of me eating that chicken Big Mac, I've not stopped thinking about it since, but you can't get it anymore. Some weeks you can get it, some weeks you can't get it. I don't understand. Anyways, I'm not gonna put any sauce in it, so I'm just gonna get the full effect. That was a really big, <laughs> that was a really big mouthful. Hang on. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. All I got there was bread and chicken. I don't feel like I got any of the filling because I'm not in the inside yet. It is nice, don't get me wrong, but I do feel like it just tastes like a, is it like a chicken sandwich? Oh. Hi. It's all right. <laughs> Guys, I can't cope with that when that happens. I knew that was gonna happen today. Wait for it, you'll see him in a minute, just walking around the back. 
There he is. It's security, but it just never gets any less embarrassing like if he catches me filming a video. This is good. This is a bit more of a lighthearted one. Best horror film you've watched. Best horror film that you've watched which actually scared you. Okay, I've got an answer for this. Sorry if you don't like horror films. I'll just make it a quick one. Hands down, scariest horror film I've ever watched, Hereditary. Hands down. It's not because it's actually really, really scary. I think I've seen probably scarier films, but it's just when things could actually happen, that's when they really scare me. Like when it's like cults and rituals and things that could actually, I just spat, things that could actually potentially happen, that's, that messes me up. And Hereditary, Tommy and I refuse to watch it now. We both can't watch it. It's, I'd probably say it's his top rated scariest film as well and he has seen thousands of horrors we're both obsessed with horrors um but yeah hereditary if you want to literally brick yourself and not sleep for weeks that's your film weirdly there was loads of questions this time about what do you and tommy argue about those of you guys want to know <laughs> so random um but before i tell you what we argue about there was also loads of questions about where he is what he's doing but he's still not made that announcement yet but i do feel like when this video goes out he would have made the announcement but i'm still not gonna say anything just yet because i'll let him do that but tommy and i are absolutely great we're just like the cringiest loved up couple on the planet and i wouldn't have it any other way like we are that annoying couple we've not shared a bed now for over five weeks like heading on six weeks we have not slept in the same bed I miss him so much. I did actually see him yesterday. I did this like, cute little cinema set up in the back of my car and I drove down to where he was and surprised him. But as for what we argue about, well, well, there's a few things. I'm trying to think specifically of like what we argue about. Uh, okay, one example of something we might argue about would be like him listening to instructions. There was one day where I had no care for the cats and he came home and looked after them for me because he's away and I was away in Paris. Um, and basically he fed the cats wrong and was like, babe, I gave them these pouches. They really, really loved them, but they're like their treat pouches. Like they're not their food pouches. He basically gave them like a full meal of treats. Yes, yeah, someone like that, I got annoyed at him about it. And we had an argument about it. He was like, you didn't explain it properly. And I'm like, no, I did explain it properly. So just general, relationship bickering you know and then five minutes later i'm like okay maybe i didn't explain it properly and he's like, okay maybe i didn't listen properly and it's done but it's so normal to have arguments in a relationship like i would never come on here and be like we just don't argue like i remember making a video of tommy when we were maybe like two months in, into our relationship and I, I watch it back sometimes and we're like we just don't argue like we just we just never argue we've not had one argument literally not one that's why i said could you even pick one right okay to be fair back then we didn't argue because i feel like we didn't i don't know like you know when you're in the first few months of your relationship like you don't really argue like in that honeymoon phase and we are definitely still in our honeymoon phase because we don't love each other any less we're just so comfortable with each other now that like if one of us has a problem or one of us doesn't like something like we're gonna tell the other person do you know what i mean that's just how it is like you're gonna be honest and say look i don't like it when you do that or he'll say to me listen like you're annoying me when you do that me and tommy are soulmates like i, I know it sounds so cringy but like we are just meant to be together we're just like so in love and just so happy to have each other and just um yeah we just we're just really really cringy anyway moving on to the next question a little bit heartbroken because i just had to do a little bit of work on my phone for the last half an hour now my food's cold i feel like maybe putting it in the microwave because i'm not joking you this is this is ice cold <laughs> it feels ice cold that's just great anyway i'm gonna have a little bite of my plain cheeseburger did i get it plain will you say i did i think i did i kind of got a bit of squash as well it looks really flat, like a patty. A little patty. Mmm. <laughs> I am gonna answer a couple of questions about the cats. I'm gonna do it, okay? You guys, I've been so, well, not everyone, but some people have been so desperate to know about the cats. Um, because literally, out of nowhere, suddenly Tommy and I had two cats. Now, I'm not going to go into like, the full story, but I will tell you a few things. I'm not going to like read out any specific questions because the amount of questions I get on a daily basis about the cats is just ridiculous. I have two little kittens called Eggy and Bread. If you see them on my social media, I'll pop a little picture of them up here. They have changed my life so much. 
I can't even begin to explain my love for them. So the white one is eggy and the brown one is bread. Um, and they are Scottish folds. That has been the most highly asked question I've ever had in my life. What breed are your cats? What breed are your cats? So they are Scottish folds. Um, hence why bread's ears are like, they're like in. Um, some people say to me like, what's wrong with your cat? Like, why does he have no ears? I'm like, no, that's his breed. Um, they're brothers, they're best friends, and they're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, when we're in the new house, in just literally a few days, ah, I'll talk to you about them more. But that is, that is Eggie and Bread. This is a nice question. I want to move to Manchester next year. How do I budget properly? And is it easy to do? Like two very different parts of that question like how do you budget for it and is it easy to do I literally decided a week before I left for Manchester to move there that I was going to move there and it was literally like that so for me it was very easy because I made it happen very quickly but budgeting to save like budgeting to, to be able to get somewhere in Manchester is so so hard I've been there because I moved when I was 18 just I literally just turned no how old, yeah I literally just turned 18 and I didn't have like, I had no money. I wasn't even making enough to pay my rent when I moved over to Manchester, but I was quite good at saving. Um, and I'd saved up quite a bit of money and I paid for my first six months of my first apartment up front. But if I hadn't gone on Love Island, I would have had to have moved back down to Hertfordshire because I physically couldn't afford to pay for my rent anymore. I don't think I've ever actually said that online before. I've said it in my book, which is coming out soon, by the way. But anyway, I've said it, I've talked about it a lot more in my book. Um, but yeah, if I hadn't, I've got on Love Island, I, would have, I wouldn't have been able to stay in Manchester anymore because I physically couldn't afford it. My rent of my first apartment was £900 a month and um, I could only live there because I paid the first six months up front. But after that ended, I would have had to have moved home because I wasn't earning £900 a month. I would never give like financial advice. That's just like such a um, taboo subject and topic and, I, and I'm not like educated enough on it to give you advice. But um, in terms of is it easy to do, I feel like it's as easy as you make it in your head in terms of not the financial side, but like plucking up the courage or um, finding the confidence or like living by yourself, like you can do it basically is what I'm trying to say. One thing I will quickly just say before I move on to the next question is that a couple of my friends actually flat share. So they'll share with girls that they didn't know before or like they're not necessarily friends with, but also want to live in Manchester, um, but have like a certain budget that they want to stay by for their rent. Um, so they'll like get an apartment and they'll have say like two or three bedrooms and like two girls will go in it together or three girls or your flat share it doesn't even necessarily have to be like girls. It can be guys or whatever like that's a good way to do it i actually don't understand the universe someone's asked me what's next in terms of your big hairy audacious goals big hairy audacious goals <laughs> what like what what does that even mean what does that even mean big hairy audacious goals like <sighs> like i don't i don't understand i'm sorry i'm sorry like i don't I don't get, like, and some of these questions, I don't know if I can eat anymore. I don't know why, I'm, I can't, I'm, I thought I was going to finish all of that, but I feel like the chips, I don't know, like, the chips go cold so quick, and then they go a bit soggy, and I've also got my McFlurry in the freezer, which I'm going to get in a second. But someone asked, is this going to be your forever home? And that's about the house we're moving into. That's a really good question. Um, I see this house, let me just finish my mouthful, because I can't, I can't, I'm finding it hard to smoke fine because I don't like talking with my mouth full, so just give me a second. I see this house that we're moving into being being like a five to ten year home. That's what I'm thinking. Personally, I want to always keep the house. I think we should always keep it. Um, and then I'd like to potentially rent it out in the future because um, I am starting like a property portfolio, like buying houses and renting them out. Um, that's an incredible way to invest. Um, that was so loud, I just went, invest. I see us having our first baby there, if we're lucky enough to have babies, being there when we get engaged and like maybe getting married and stuff. Like that's where we will live when all those things happen. Um, but yeah, I don't think it will be where we'll stay literally forever and ever and ever. I'm only 22. So in 10 years time, I'll be 32 and I'll probably want a bit of a change by then. I'd give this home style burger, I don't know, like it really wasn't my favorite. I'd probably give it like a six out of 10. Like it just tastes like a nice chicken burger. Like it's a nice chicken burger, but like all like the caramelized onion and the lettuce and the sauce and stuff. Like I didn't taste any of that. Like it was just like a really thick 
chicken patty. Fun fact, cream egg is actually one of my favorite chocolates. Like I went through a stage when I was younger where I used to be obsessed with cream eggs and I've never had a cream egg McFlurry before. Um, so I was really excited for it. But when you get, No one's talked to me for at least a week. No one talks to me for at least a week. I've been literally so excited to try this, but um, unfortunately I got 0.01% of topping. It happens sometimes, it happens sometimes. And is it a thing where you can ask for double topping? Because I feel like that's, a, that's an old wives tale. Like I feel like it used to be a thing. That's a little bit of the sauce there and the chocolate. Let's see what that's like. Yeah. I'm getting cream egg. I am getting cream egg. <laughs> Don't because I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna cry. No. It's not normal how much of a cat mom I am. Like I'm so proud of them. I've been filming this video all afternoon. I've been sat here eating McDonald's all afternoon. <laughs> I don't know why it's taking me so long. I just feel like I had to up do like work bits in between and you know, it's a Saturday, but really it feels like it's a Monday. Anyway guys, I'm gonna sit here, eat my McFlurry. Just have a really nice chilled afternoon to myself. Probably put Harry Potter on, maybe have a bath later. I'm really enjoying this Saturday. I'm missing my boyfriend terribly, but you know, what can you do? And I'm just chilling. If you made it to the end of this video, well done. <laughs> If you enjoyed um, this mukbang, let me know. But yeah, if you did make it to the end of this video, then I love you millions, of course. Um, I really enjoyed filming, actually. I mean, I can definitely sit here again and eat food and chat to you guys. Let me know down below if you're enjoying the more regular content, what you want me to film for you guys. I've got loads of house vlogs coming soon. I'm just loving YouTube at the minute. I'm loving it so much. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and hopefully I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.